everybody, and welcome to the Carlton Midnight Society. How's everybody doing tonight? Are you guys ready to experience the holy grail of Cinema Nocturna, that is the North American theatrical premiere of brutalized mashup masterpiece, yeah. Terminator 2, Shocking Dark. <laughs> Are you guys ready to handle the thespian stylings of Arnold Schwarzenegger's non-union Italian equivalent? <laughs> Are you guys ready to meet the Italian newt who sounds like she may or may not be related to Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Are you guys dressed up in your finest post-apocalyptic wear to win some fabulous prizes? Yeah. One of you is. Are you guys tired of me asking you questions in a hyped up fashion, in a desperate attempt to try and hype you up even more when statistics, when statistics prove that the most hyped up an audience can get is when you ask them if they're ready for a screening the very first time? Yeah! All right. Well, my name's Matthew. My name's Matthew Saliba, and I'm one of the managers here at the Carlton Cinema, and I'm also one of the uh, film programmers and curator of the Carlton Midnight Society. And folks, uh, I gotta tell you, you've really left me speechless. Uh, I had a bit of a speech prepared, but I, I, for the life of me, I can't even believe that there's at least 60, maybe 70 people here to see a Bruno Matai film. <laughs> you guys know who Bruno Matai is, right? You guys know that this isn't Terminator 2 Judgment Day by James Cameron. I just wanted to make that clear. It was funny, there was this what, there was this guy who came in earlier and he was like, oh, you know that Terminator 2 Shocking Dark, is that the one with the Schwarzenegger? And we have to explain, well, no, it's not. It's an Italian mashup film. And he's like, well, I can't deal with any of that malarkey. I'm getting the hell out of here. But thankfully, you guys all stuck around it. Thank you very, very much. Now, how many people came to the last screening that we did of Turkish Spider-Man versus Captain Turkish America? All right, well, a couple of you. That's great. So I might be going over old territory for you guys, but since all of you are practically new, I'll just explain real quick you know, who we are and, more importantly, who we're not. Uh, Jeez, I've got to pace myself better. All right, well, um, the thing is, nowadays it seems like it's very in vogue for a lot of film, uh, film theaters out there to do their B movie nights and their cult movie nights. And that's great. I mean, we all love nostalgia. And let's face it, movies by and large nowadays suck. And we all enjoy films from our past. Um, but the thing is, you know, there's a tendency with a lot of these uh, theaters to go through its uh, the sort of Rolodex of cult films, you know? You can always count on theaters showing Evil Dead, or Night of the Living Dead, or Plan 9 from Outer Space, or Eraserhead, or El Topo, Holy Mountain, and there's nothing wrong with any of those films. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're probably gonna be showing Night of the Living Dead on Halloween, so I probably shouldn't bad mouth the film too much there. Um, but the fact, but you get what I'm saying, like uh, there's a certain cliche group of films that always gets programmed, and what we want to try and do here at the Carlton Midnight Society is show you films that you've either never heard about or maybe you've seen on some 16th generation Bolivian <laughs> bootleg film. Or uh, maybe, you've, maybe you've heard of some of these films but you've never seen them uncut on the big screen. And so that's what we're trying to do here. It's very much a work in progress. And uh, the success of the Carlton Midnight Society very much depends on all of you because we could program Jess Franco double bills or Jean Rolene and retrospects, or we could do a Caligula on a double bill with Necromantic, and I'd love to go see those films, but if we don't put butts in seats, then it really doesn't matter. So when I say this, this isn't just some sort of uh, marketing ploy. Like, I really do thank you all for coming to the screening. It really does mean a lot to me and to everyone here at the Carlton. Jeez. <laughs> all right, uh, I just want to go over a couple quick little things. I want to give you a heads up on what we are doing for the rest of the year. Now, uh, next month on Saturday, September the 19th, we're gonna be changing things up a little bit. We're gonna be doing our first of two double features that we're planning this year. Uh, in September, we're gonna be doing a Jallo double feature. Uh, on one hand, we're gonna be presenting uh, Dario Argento's masterpiece from 1975, Deep Red. Now, thank you for one person who knows that. <laughs> now, I know that some people might be thinking, you know, wasn't Deep Red recently screened in Toronto? And that is true, but what you probably didn't realize is the version that you might have seen was actually the US cut of the film, which had almost 40 minutes of footage removed from the final cut. What we're gonna be presenting is the uncut and uncensored two-hour Italian version of the film. And uh, that's the, really the only way to see that film, so we're really happy to be doing that. 
And then on the other end of that double bill, we're going to be showing a contemporary giallo by the Canadian filmmaking outfit Astron 6. We're going to be showing the editor. Uh, some of you might have seen their other film that they made called Manborg. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. Uh, we're still ironing out a couple of details, but there will likely be a cast and crew Q&A to go along with that. So this will be Saturday, September the 19th. And also do note that the time is going to be a little different. Uh, as much as I'd love to pr program both those films at 11, uh, if we did that, we'd all be out of here by 4 in the morning. So Deep Red will be presented at 7 p.m. And the editor will be presented at 9.30 p.m. Uh, then in October, on Saturday, October the 24th, we're doing another double feature. And this is something that I'm really, really excited about. And I'm so, so happy that we got a chance to do this. Uh, some of you might not realize, but you know, all our rooms are uh, equipped to pr uh, project films digitally. But when I got to, when I started working here, I did a little snooping around, and I couldn't help but notice that in room number two, we have a 35 millimeter projector. And not only do we have a 35 millimeter projector, but we have a 35 millimeter projector that works beautifully. So when I found out about that. I got to do a little digging and I called up my good buddies over at Grindhouse Releasing and they were very generous enough to loan us a couple of prints for this double feature that we're doing on October the 24th. Uh, on one hand, we're going to be presenting Lucio Fulci's 1981 hallucin hallucinatory nightmare of surreal imagery that is the beyond. And on the other half, we're gonna be showing a Spanish slasher film from 1982 called Pieces, AKA the greatest film ever committed to Celluloid. <laughs> so these are two really awesome films. Again, Beyond will be presented at seven o'clock. Pieces will be at 9.30 p.m. and tickets are on sale for all of those things. Uh, on November the 21st, we were going to screen Necromantic. Uh, but as you can probably imagine, with a film like Necromantic, we ran into a couple of problems with that movie, uh, namely the fact that it's actually banned in the province of Ontario. <laughs> uh, and an interesting side note about that, uh, in addition to Necromantic, apparently the unrated cut of Day of the Dead is also banned in the province of Ontario. So there goes our plans to do a triple feature of George Romero, uh, unless you want to do the uh, PG-13 cut. So unfortunately, Necromantic is out, but we are in the process of finding another film. Uh, we have sort of set our sights on this one uh, classic film from 1983. Uh, as you can probably imagine, due to the, uh, well, let's say the dubious nature of some of the films that we show, it's rather difficult to sometimes track down the rights. Uh, but if we do get everything all settled, uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this particular film. Uh, the only thing I'll say about the main character in this movie is that, well, he's the man. That settled in for people might have seen that film. He also likes to fly on a hang glider that's actually a, a dead bat type creature. So, maybe some of you might. Ah, yes, someone got that. <laughs> but that is what we're going to say. So, I mean, if we do get that, I think everyone will forget that we ever wanted to screen that for anything. And then finally, on December the 16th, uh, we're going to be showing uh, this we have locked down, and you can definitely get tickets, and I would highly advise that you do, because they are kind of selling pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to be showing Turkish Star Wars. <laughs> so for those of you who might not be able to get into the actual Star Wars film, feel free to come down to Carlton and watch uh, Turkish Star Wars, because for all intents and purposes, it'll probably be better. Um, so that's pretty much that. Um, now, the only other thing I wanted to do, this is something we did at the last screening, and I think it's really important when we do show obscure films like this, is to give you about a, a bit of a historical background on the film that you're about to watch. Now, when you watch this film tonight, it may be very hard for you to believe, but once upon a time, Italy truly was a force to be reckoned with in the world of cinema. From around 1959 to about 1985, Italy truly dominated every facet of genre cinema, whether it was horror, thriller, sci-fi, fantasy, action, crime, westerns, erotica, porn. Italy truly was the shit. And with good reason, you had people like Mario Bava, Dario Argento, Lucio Fulci, Umberto Lenzi, Ruggiero Diodato, Sergio Leone, Sergio Martino, Sergio Corbucci, Sergio <laughs> Salomon. <laughs> pretty much anybody named Sergio uh, was pretty good. And a lot of these guys, particularly Mario Bava, is generally regarded as being the godfather of cinema as we know it today. Uh, he, his uh, experimental use of sound and music and cinematography really laid the foundation for a lot of the filmmakers whose works we admire today, including David Lynch, 
Tim Burton and Martin Scorsese. How many people here like that film Alien by Ridley Scott? Woo! Yeah. Me too, one of my all-time favorites. But guess what? I liked it better the first time when it was released in 1965 and it was called Planet of the Vampires by Mario Bava. So go ahead and watch that film and then watch Alien and tell me if, you know, it reminds you of something. How many people here like slasher films? You know? Contrary to what some critics will have you believe, Bob Clark did not invent the slasher film with Black Christmas. That was, once again, Mario Bava with his film Bay of Blood, a.k.a. Twitch of the Death Nerve. So anyway, the point is, Italians really did rule the world of cinema. And one of the main reasons why they did that is that they were showing American audiences the kinds of things that they weren't getting from their own films, whether it was graphic depictions of sex and violence, whether it was basically a lot of experimental uses in cinematography and editing. But personally, my own personal opinion is that what they did was that they took horror out of the realm of the fantastic and into the realm of reality. Because you have to remember, up until the, the 40s and 50s, uh, the kinds of horror films that people were watching were either universal horror movies, or they were watching a lot of these sci-fi films with giant dinosaurs and Godzilla. And as terrifying as those films could apparently be to some audiences, you have to remember that people often took solace in the fact that as scary as Godzilla or King Kong could be, they, Godzilla or King Kong isn't likely to come out and actually start terrorizing the world. We'll leave the U.S. for that. Um, but so the thing with uh, the Italian films is that they, instead of King Kong or Dracula or Frankenstein's monster chasing you, you had a guy wearing leather gloves, brandishing a big butcher knife, and stalking women in their homes. Now that is very real, and that could very well happen. And so that's why these filmmakers really capitalized on people's genuine fears. And I really think that's why these films became as great as they are. Now, at some point towards the end of the 70s and going into the 80s, American filmmakers finally started realizing what makes people tick. And they started doing the same thing themselves. And arguably, they were probably doing it a little better than the Italians because they had the budgets to do so and they had better actors and access to better resources. So at this point, Italians really just gave up any sort of pretense of creating any genuine works of art. And they basically started copying the Americans flat out. Now, depending on who you ask, this either symbolized the beginning of the end of the Italian film industry or the beginning of an era of a lot of really fun films. And I happen to fall into that latter category. And heading the forefront of this fun period was the dynamic filmmaking duo of Bruno Mattai and Claudio Fragasso. Now, some of you might be familiar with Claudio Fragasso, especially if you've seen a little film called Troll 2. He was the co-writer and director of that film. Now, he collaborated with Bruno Mattai on a lot of the films that they did together. He would often write or Bruno would direct. And actually, Claudio Fragasso did, in fact, write the film that you're about to watch tonight. So they collaborated. Now, Bruno Mattai, uh, what can be said about this guy? He is the epitome of an acquired taste. Uh, there's a buddy of mine in Boston who runs a podcast called Cine Sludge, and his name is David Zuzello. And this is for you, David. Uh, and David Zuzello was the one who really hooked me on to Bruno Mattai. And it took me a while to kind of get it understand where he's coming from and see what his style is. And he does have a style, uh, if, if, if these things can be measured as such. Uh, but his basic uh, uh, signature is that he is the king of the mashups. Uh, he's done films like Robo War, which is a mashup of Robocop and Predator. He's done uh, Jaws 5, Cruel Jaws, which is the Italian Jaws. Uh, he made a film called Strike Commando, which is the Italian Rambo. Oh, there we go. It's the Italian, pretty much every major American action film. Uh, and then, of course, he's made films like Rats, Night of Terror, which uh, the, that film's biggest claim to fame is uh, there's an African-American actress named Goretta Goretta who dresses in white face and sings a song about how she's whiter than you. And that needs to be seen for you believe. And then, of course, his masterpiece uh, is Hell of the Living Dead, which not only incorporates the plot of Dawn of the Dead, but steals the music from that film. <laughs> and now, sandwiched between all of this uh, is Terminator 2, Shocking Dark. Now, um, I don't know what else I can really say about this film. It's basically aliens combined with Terminator. And I'm not kidding. There, it's one thing to rip off a film. It's another thing to literally take beat for beat and call it your own. And uh, I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this film. And the fact that you're all here, and if you guys really do enjoy the film, please let us know because there's plenty more where this came from. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could do with this. 
So that's pretty much that. Now, we did have a, a post-apocalyptic Christian context here where we were encouraging people to come